This day's been coming. This day's been coming since this company was revealed. This day's been coming since the ontolage of requests and comments talking and asking about Siren have hit my channel like a frickin' bullet. And this thing has been sitting in the corner of my room since I got it, staring at me. Which means every morning when I wake up, this is the first thing I see. It looks like this, leaning up against the wall. I see the sideways thing that says Mauler, and I remember, oh my god, I still have to make a video on that. That's how much I don't want to make a video on this, because, spoiler warning, this is the worst Nerf Blaster this year. I'm saying it. This is the worst thing released all year. Let's get into it. But before I talk about this nugget, we actually gotta talk about the box. Who in the hell is Siren? I didn't talk about these in the Blink video because I mean that video was already way too long. This video isn't going to be as long so I actually have time to talk about these people. And it is kind of a really big deal this year that suddenly this company has entered the ring. NSI makes Siren. You know who LaserX is? Those people. That's NSI. This is the same company that made LaserX. And while I could go on about the box, oh my god, it's so weird, it's got like this cardboard insert thing that you have to take out, whatever, it's got a QR code that's on it. What I really want to point out is, do you remember when Dart Zone trademarked Blaster Tag and they tried to get away with it and then it didn't work? You're not gonna believe this. Oh, nothing comes close. Look in there. Do you see it? Do you see it? That's right. They trademarked this. It's not marketing. It is a trademarked sentence. This is trademarked and owned by NSI. <laughs> Screw you, Siren. No excuse for trademarking something like that. There was no excuse when Dark Zone did it, and there's no excuse for you to do it either. Unbelievable. I'm already mad. We haven't even started talking about the nugget yet. This night's gonna freaking suck, isn't it? <sighs> Fresh mindset. Let's start with the design. I absolutely love it. This is one of the things that I have always loved about this blaster from the start. It is the best design I've seen for any of the blasters like this that have been released on the market. Granted, there aren't that many, but this is still the best one. I love this better than the long shot, and honestly, kill me or not, I like the way this looks better than the Lynx. I said it, I really like the way that the Mauler looks. It looks freaking awesome. Every single one of these little lines just matches up so well. And this tiny carbon fiber print that is all over all the black segments of the plastic just look really, really cool. Very nice and premium feeling. As well as the plastic quality. It is built like an absolute truck, just like the Blink is. I really like the way it looks. Obviously, everything is printed on both sides. And uh, what is that? We'll get into that in just a minute. But they've got all the printing on both sides. Everything here looks like it's meant to be here. It is really cool. It looks like a freaking submarine. The only part of this blaster that I don't like looking at is the very front end. It is incredibly boring. It's just a square flat green block with orange here and an orange barrel and this like weird block. Oh no, it doesn't have a scar muzzle. Don't worry, we'll get into that in due time. Oh god, we'll get into that in due time, I promise. But for right now, we gotta talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, a pump grip, a stock, and a cheek wrist. First, let's talk about the main grip. If it wasn't for the Rogue, this would be the worst main grip I've felt all year. It is actually worse than any other blaster I've used besides the Busby Rogue. Why is it so bad? Because, like, it's a really big grip and it's really, like, nice shaped. Oh, it's simple. It's completely square. Completely square. It's square on the back, it's square on the sides, it's square on the front, and oh, do you like finger troils? Screw you. Here's an anti-finger troil. What? What is this? What is this? Why is there this large nub sticking out right where your middle finger's supposed to go? Oh my god, all the angles are in just the right spot that where they dig into the most sensitive parts of your hands. Right there, right here on your thumb, right here on your knuckle. Ew! Oh, it's 
awful. Like you compare this to something like the Infinite's grip. Look at how the Infinite not only has a big grip, but it's got a nice finger troil and all the little angles have been taken accounted for. It is a very nice, pleasant grip to hold for a very long period of time. It never gets uncomfortable. It never gets aggravating. I can hold the Infinite for hours on end and never feel upset about the grip. This thing sucks to hold for three seconds to demonstrate to the camera what shape the grip is. That's how bad it is. And you betcha this thing hurts to use on the battlefield. This grip is so bad that it actually injured me. While I was trying to use this at a game, it actually hurt so bad on my hand that it made me lose the ability to hold grips properly because my middle finger was cramping up and I couldn't hold my blaster. So I had to use a flywheel blaster in a round and oh boy, that screwed me over because we were doing limited darts. You get the point. The grip is freaking atrocious. What about the foregrip. It feels worse. <laughs> I, I'm not even joking. Yes, it is rounded on the front. So there you go. There's a pro. But it is absolutely tiny in all the worst ways you can imagine. You can put your four fingers up around the front. But as soon as you have to figure out what to do with the palm of your hand and your thumb, good luck finding any comfortable way to hold this. Look at this. I can literally hide the grip in my hands. That's how tiny it is. No matter how you grip this thing, it is not big enough to get a good handhold on it. I end up putting my thumb through the back part of it like this because you know why you know why it's still flat on the back it's only rounded on the front so there's still a big flat ledge that my thumb has to rest on sideways and that feels very very wrong and because i have to hold the foregrip so weird my arm cramps up horribly after using this for just a few minutes. It happened during my testing procedure twice, and I thought that it was me doing something wrong. No, it is because the way I have to hold this blaster is so unconventional that it's straining my muscles in an unnatural way. Oh god, if the main grip and the foregrip are so terrible, what about the stock? The stock is fantastic. I love the stock a lot. And that's hilarious because the other two grips are so terrible. But look at this. It's like the perfect length. It's very rounded on the back. The details don't get in the way because they have like a wall around them. And you have a large flat space to put your cheek. Honestly, a very good stock. And it is like the only comfortable part about this blaster. Genuinely, I rate the stock. I would happily put that stock on another blaster. And the reason why I would put on another blaster is because any blaster is more comfortable than this one. So how does this thing work? The Mauler is a pump action magazine fed springer that uses these tarts. So you take your magazine, you put it in like this, you pull this back, you push it forward and you can fire once. Or it's got slam fire. Ugh. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get to the prime smoothness and stuff in a minute. But before we do that, I, I need to address what in the actual hell is this abomination? This absolute sin against God, Jesus, and all of mankind. This is not a dart. This is what would happen if you took a Nerf Ultra dart and dunked it in a bucket of corporate. If there was such thing as liquid corporate and you took a Nerf Ultra dart and dunked it in there and held it there for like 20 minutes straight, and when you pull it out, this is what you would get. This is without a doubt the most offensive projectile I've ever seen in my life to be included with any kind of blaster. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, hey? Isn't it made out of the same stuff that Ultra Darts are made out of and Azure Dragons? And it looks really, really good. I mean, it's really pretty. I like the colors. And the tip of it is just like this super soft, squishy rubber. Is, isn't it a good dart? How could it possibly be bad? It is true. This is made out of polypropylene, the same stuff that Azure Dragons are made out of, which are some of the best darts to ever exist in the entire world. The problem is, these are missing an extremely important component that makes those and even Ultra Darts work. Ultra darts are waxed, and so are Azure Dragons, and that wax acts as a laminate that is very shiny and provides a lot of extra support to the foam, which causes the foam to be a lot more rigid, a lot denser, and a lot stronger. You notice that Ultra darts rarely ever tear on the foam. They decap all the time, but the foam remains rigid all the frickin' time, and the only spot that they're not is directly under the dart head because the dart head was applied before the laminate was put on for some bizarre reason. But all that you 
you really need to know is that the foam here is incredibly strong and very hard to tear, while these darts do not have that wax laminate. It is basically just raw styrofoam, which causes the foam here to be more fragile than a piece of paper. And as such, these darts love to explode. Do you want to know what this warning here is? Do not fire at objects closer than 25 feet. Do you think that this is made to protect people? No! These darts are so fragile that if you shoot at things in close range, the contact of the dart head making contact with the wall can be enough to cause these things to explode and shatter in half! By the way, now that that's out of the way, I'm just gonna leave that dart there because I'm lazy. Let's talk about the prime smoothness and the triggers. First of all, what does mag insertion feel like? It feels pretty good. It's a little bit heavier than it should be, but it does feel pretty good. And the mag release is not too bad, but it definitely could be better. The biggest problem is that it's cheap and you see how it's like turning like that? It's supposed to pull straight back. Yeah, it's, it's made out of hate. It's not made out of stuff at all, but it does get the job done. As for the main trigger, I really like it. I like the way the main trigger feels a lot. It is a little bit spongy when you're just kind of mushing it, but when you actually fire the blaster, it is a very responsive and very good feeling trigger. Oh my god. Freaking God, the freaking Prime still sucks. The priming handle sucks, and the actual Prime weight and smoothness is not any better than the way the priming handle feels. It is a perfect match. The priming handle and the Prime smoothness are a match made in heaven. It's like they were meant to be. Oh my God, it's freaking horrible. It is so unbelievably rough, unbelievably stiff, unbelievably gritty, and with no form of smoothness, lubricant, or anything applied to it. It feels like you are trying to prime the blaster through a bunch of gravel. And if you're wondering how the actual performance change thing works on this, oh my goodness, it's gonna be something really cool like the blink, right? Nope, it is this weird lever thing that's on the side of it. This position that's out right now is 150. This position here is about 180 or 200. And this one is about 270. Do you wanna know what that does? All it does is restrict how much you can prime the blaster, which means that the blaster is a lot less miserable to prime on the 150 option. God forbid you wanna put it in the highest option. It is one of the worst, most miserably heavy and long primes you can possibly have on a blaster. But I mean, at least it changes the performance in any way that it does, it gets the job done. There are right ways to do this, and this is not the right way at all. And I still would argue that we haven't gone over the biggest problem that it has. Yeah, no scar muzzle. Again, just like the torrent. Why does this blaster get a pass for not having a scar muzzle, but people hated the torrent for not having a scar muzzle? Why does this one get a pass? And even worse than the torrent, why is the barrel too small? You heard me right, the barrel is too small for darts. It only barely works with the crappy ultra foam style darts that it comes with. If you try and put a standard dart in it, it doesn't work right at all. Half the darts don't even come out. They just go thunk and get stuck right about here. So you have to prime and fire the blaster again just to get the dart to fart out of the barrel. And a lot of times, darts just come out backwards or they decap inside the blaster. Yeah, this is the first and only blaster I've ever seen that the barrel is so tight that it is able to decap darts inside the barrel. That's inexcusably bad. Oh god, let's see this thing fire. You guys aren't getting a first person firing demo because I literally can't be bothered to put the headset on to fire this stupid idiot. Single shot first, low FPS, then middle, then high, then again with slam fire. It got stuck. Yeah, though it performs great. It shoots hard, but it doesn't shoot where you're aiming at all. And because of the tightness of the barrel, darts just go in whatever direction they want. And sometimes darts just get stuck in it. Big whoop. What mod potential does this thing have? Well, 
Luckily, there's quite a bit that you can do with this. You can completely replace the barrel, you can replace the front end to give it a scar muzzle, and you can lubricate all of the terrible mechanisms in here. But it still has the worst grip ever and the worst pump grip ever, and oh, would you look at that? There's no Picatinny under here. You can't even put your own grip on. Like, oh, what? Dart zone blasters? Yep, you can put Picatinny grips on dart zone blasters. This is literally stooping lower than a dart zone blaster. Oh, and I guess I forgot to mention that the O-ring loves to fall off. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the magazine sounds like this. It sounds like a TV remote. What is happening with it? Yeah, the, what do you, what do I think of this blaster? Let's bring in a round of applause. Everyone watching this video, I want you guys to clap. I can't because I only have one hand. So I'm just going to slap my forehead. Congratulations, Siren Mauler. You did it. One blaster this year had to be the worst. This blaster is so bad at its job that I would rather take that in any Nerf war that I ever go to for the rest of my life over it. The Zuru X-Shot Long Shot, a blaster that I absolutely smashed on in my review because it had a ton of problems. This blaster is better. <laughs> This blaster is better in so many ways, it's not even funny. The grip doesn't hurt your hands. The foregrip doesn't hurt your hands. The prime is smooth and ratchety. The trigger actually makes sense. I forgot to mention that this has slam fire. Wait, no, I didn't because I've completely never used slam fire ever. The mag release actually makes sense. And it's got a spot for a scar muzzle with the correct size barrel. Who would have thunk it? What confuses me so much, how did these people also make the blink? This is one of the best blasters this year. In fact, I have argued that this might be the best blaster this year, and I'm still debating on that. I don't know, because the third gen Omnia genuinely looks absolutely amazing, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. But genuinely, the best and the worst by the same company in the same year. That is impressive. And it's really impressive when you think about the fact that N-Series came out this year, the Venom Pro came out this year, the Maxim Pro, whatever the hell that thing was, came out this year. There was a whole lot of good and a whole lot of absolutely terrible. And these two blasters right here, I think might just be the very best and the very worst out of the entire year. And that is insanity to me. This blaster sucks so horrifically much. Please avoid this thing at any cost you can possibly think of. No matter what, I beg of you guys to look into the Zuru X-Shot Long Shot before you even consider buying one of these. That's how bad this blaster is. Look at any other Springer this year, and I bet you you will have more fun than it. I would argue that the Nerf Pro Torrent is more fun than the Mauler. I would argue it's more moddable, more comfortable, more usable. It's cheaper. God, Nerf stupid freaking nugget dingus idiot Springer is better than this. And it all makes sense when you think about it. Siren was just focused on the blink. And that honestly is all there should have been. The only reason this exists is to have a Springer primary alongside the blink so that they can have one other option on the shelf. And I'm sure the Gnarl is going to give me most of, if not the exact same problems when or if I ever acquire one. Legitimately, that's the only reason this exists, and that's probably the only reason the Arl exists, is so that there could be more blasters with the Siren logo on it than just the Blink. And unfortunately, filler doesn't mean better. But I don't know, tell me what you guys think in the comments, and if for some reason you want one of these, I will link it in the description below. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Bye!